And so what happens is this will go up on YouTube and you can watch it again or you can share it with your daughter and she can watch thank it. You. How's that sound? Okay. That sounds ideal, thank you. Okay, so you can see this. Looks like some sort of an X-ray or scan. Yeah, so this is this is your daughter. Right. And um, it's just uh, highlighting what she looks like. This is her and um, you can sort of, you can see the teeth there. You can see the yep. teeth. Yep. The overbite there. Yes. And in in here somewhere is a brain. So your daughter has um, got her face here. So you can see her face. And one of the features of her face is that she's um, straining to try to get her lips together. And yep. The other feature is this structure here, which is the flesh underneath the jawline, which actually represents her tongue. And I'll show it to you here. So this is a cross section and you guess you see the dome of the tongue there. And this is a muscle uh, that stretches from, um, from this structure here towards the inside of a jaw. And it's contracted just like a bicep on her arm. Yeah, and it's holding this airway open at the back. When she's asleep yeah. at night, this muscle relaxes and this structure will collapse down and it closes this airway. Yep. Yeah right now it's so that is basically that you're showing me what sleep apnea looks like exactly. which i don't i don't have her yeah i don't have her i'm not seeing evidence of sleep apnea um with her but i know her father has had acute sleep apnea and he's on the CPAP. so right yeah well i'll show you how it works so basically when they lie on their back as your daughter did she, she lay on her back like this yep and she's um and she was awake obviously in the scan but her eyes yep. closed yeah but you can yep. see the tone in her face in the sense that she's got this lip strain to try to keep yes I, I, yeah i definitely i no, definitely noticed that yes what happens is her lower lip falls down a little bit mm -hmm. when she relaxes and the moment that happens she's breathing through her mouth yep the moment she breathes through her mouth, there's no airflow through her through her nose. Yep. So almost certainly she's lying on her side or on her tummy, and when the lips relax, the jaw will open. Yep. And it will become dependent oral breathing from that point. Yep. Does that make sense? Yep. So this is what's happening to your husband as well, is when he's sleeping because the genetics is the same, unless she has a different father. But no, the she muscle, doesn't. No, the muscle, the muscle is suspended from the inside of the chin to that bone, and you can measure it's 33 yep. millimeters. Yeah? Right. This bone is like a, like a tent wire, and the muscle acts like a rope attached to a tree branch. And if you lift the rope, if you lift this bone up, the tent, it will open up the airway behind her tongue. And this is her air column. And you can see how it narrows here and then flattens out just there. And so when she relaxes, this muscle relaxes, the rope becomes slack and this mm -hmm. tent pole collapses and it collapses the airway. Right, that's the tongue falling back. Right. So your husband's on a CPAP and it covers the nose and the mouth yep. and it inflates this. And then when it turns off, it deflates. So it's like inflating a flat tire. So as soon as you inflate it, it collapses and then you inflate it and collapse. And that's how the CPAP works. Yes. Yep. But the mechanism is how the tongue is collapsing the airway. And that is going to be rectified with this surgery. It's taken away. So even if she hasn't got it, what's good about that is that she, she doesn't won't get it. hypertension, she doesn't develop obesity, she doesn't go fat. Yep. And then at the same yep. time, we have the opportunity of stretching that muscle so it doesn't collapse the tongue, but we can fix the bite as well. Mm -hmm. In the interim, yep. she's also not breathing through her nose. And because she's not breathing through her nose, she will have chronically blocked nose. And the blocking of the nose occurs not because she's
blocked nose, it's because the act of not breathing through her nose means it accumulates secretions. So we can actually see how well the air is passing through her nose now. So would that be why, explain why she's a child who's had a lot of tonsillitis and things like that? Exactly. It's not that she has mm. tonsillitis, it's just that the tonsils haven't got enough space behind this tongue so that she has to open her mouth to directly breathe and the tonsils get inflamed. And her yeah, sinuses right. are very inflamed as well. In fact, when you look at her right nostril, she has no airflow at all. So wow. the pupil is the air, it, there's no air. You can see the left side has got air, yep. but the right side has no air. Is it, is it possible that she, when she had this scan done, she may have had some upper respiratory infection or something along those lines? Or would this be, would this translate as what's going on typically with her? Well, here's another sign of it. Do you see the sac that's sitting here? Yes. This sac here and this sac here. These are sacs that can only inflate if you're regularly breathing through your nose 14 times a minute. Right. If there's no airflow while she's asleep, or if there's only airflow on one side, one sac will be developing bigger than the other, which I think you can right. see that's the case. Can you see that this sac is bigger than this sac? Yes. Yep. And you can see that this airway is associated with a bigger sac, which tells me that this blockage has been there a long time. Yes, righto. And not only that, the sacs themselves are small. Yes structurally yep so this sack have you ever played paper mache yes and you blow up a balloon yes and when you blow up the balloon you put newspaper over it and then the newspaper yes. sits and becomes a hard shell well that's yes. how the cheek that's what i see so the upper jaw sits mm. at the base of this so you can see how the sacks grow this and now you can see that this jaw here is bigger than this jaw how oh, amazing Yes. And now you can also see okay. that this cheekbone is bigger than this cheekbone. Wow. Okay. Does that make sense? So when you yeah, ask, I can see, I can actually see it on the had scale. It cold at the same time, the answer is both mm. yes and no. She has an inflamed yeah. membrane here because she has no nasal airflow to clean it of mucus. Yep. And in the mucus is contained all the pollens and dusts, which when you breathe yep. regularly, that mucus is swallowed and it carries away the pollens. But now the pollens are chronically not being cleared and it causes this reactive inflamed sinus membrane, which can so a constant infection what? basically. What's that? Right. So the act of her lying on her side with her mouth open in order to breathe means that she's not naturally clearing the mucus in her nose that naturally occurs. And because of that, it's like a stagnant creek bed and all the weeds are growing around the lack of water flow in the creek. And it's becoming chronically blocked. And yep. it's led to an and obviously to... of the upper jaw. Oh, I, I'm, I'm assuming that it would just continue to disable her you know, facial structure and sinus structure, etc. Exactly. Um, it's untreated. So. Exactly. The other thing that's going on is we've got braces on the teeth, and the longer we have braces on the teeth, it's also not allowing the natural development of the upper jaw. And that's just like wearing shoes right. on growing feet for too long. You start to get a deformed foot, and we call that Chinese foot binding. Yep. And you can see there's been an attempt at expanding by Dr. Lewis, where he's been trying to stretch this out a little bit, but it's starting to push the teeth out of the bone, particularly on the small side. So, like, just a question that you obviously are you working in unison with Dr. Lewis on this? I mean, I don't want you to go both try to achieve something different. No, 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 no. I don't want you to interpret it that way. I'm saying braces can only do so much, and the longer you try yeah, right. braces, okay. all that's happening is it's making it smaller. 
Yep, okay. Do you understand? I am convinced by your medicine, so I don't feel that you need to convince me. I, I feel that it is the best thing, so... All right, so we definitely have to make this side of her face bigger so that when she can breathe because we've made a jaw bigger that she can breathe down this right side of her nose and okay so how is that, that achieved now. because that's the best time when she heals and she's growing and there should yep. be no evidence of surgery after i finish what i do but if i operate in your Wonderful. husband he doesn't have any growth hormone and he isn't growing to be able to adapt to any surgery on him. So we call it a cut and paste with your husband. Yep. But in a child, what we're trying to do is yep. stimulate all of this to grow as naturally as we can. Does that sure. make sense? But the braces as a limit before it becomes a negative. So Dr. Lewis has yeah. done as much positive as he can. <laughs> if he continues, he's worried he's going backwards, not forwards. Yes. Uh, will just, will the braces just, need to just come the off? Wire. Just uh, the wire. Just the wire. Right, the, the surgery. Yeah, just, I, I, I just don't want the wire, that's all. Right, I do want, you take that off or do we need I want to see Dr. Lewis take it off? I want her feet to grow normally, yeah? I, I can take it off. Or do you it. just want to leave a tick? Yeah. After surgery, when she's healing up, yeah. the braces won't have any impact beyond the fact that the brackets are sitting on her teeth ready no. to be rewired in the future. Exactly. Right, yeah. so she will ultimately have to continue on with her orthodontic work for a period of time, I presume? A little bit afterwards, but this just quickens it yes. 20 by a factor of 20, what, what yep. you and I are about to do to you, your daughter. We're not yep. going to hurt her, we're just going to do it in a way that's sensible. So I hope okay. this establishes that she has quite a significant problem with the nasal airway. So I'm, I'm accepting what you're telling me, so... But to an ear, nose and throat surgeon, they'll say, oh, she's got a deviated septum, she's got a big turbinate, she's got big tonsils, she's got adenoids, we've got to remove everything. But what I'd like to do is not do that. I want her to keep all her anatomy. I just want to make it bigger. Does that make sense? Right. So the upper jaw, I'd like to be yeah. bigger. Yeah. The lower jaw... I want you to have so, this. You can see I put a midline marker right down the center of her face. And you can see the midline marker goes straight between her two front teeth. But can you see that her yes. lower teeth are off to one side? Oh, my eyesight's terrible, but yes, I can slightly see that, yes. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll zoom in. Okay. Can you see her... Now, presumably, that's because, because the cavity... Oh, yes, I definitely see that. So, okay, right. Okay, okay and that's because, and that's because that this jaw, the cavities. this jaw here, the green bit, is smaller than the left bit, even though the jaw itself overall is small. Yep. Yeah. And the final yes. bit of the puzzle okay. is she has no chin button. Behind the chin is where the muscles, the critical muscles that we need to pull. They sit here yep. and here. Yeah. So we've yep. got this blue block because it holds these two muscles. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what I'd like to do is simply bring her upper jaw forward. Right. So so can I just ask the question? The what we had discussed previously was actually a proce procedure to break the bottom jaw. No. Grow I, that... I, I won't break a bottom jaw. <laughs> Okay, so well, 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 my understanding was that you you would cut it or something, no, no, so no, that you no. would encourage. I'll 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 show right, you. Okay. All right. Okay. Right. Good. Right. Good. So you're seeing me now, right? Can you put your hands together? No, no. Okay, so I'm putting my hands together. Yes. Okay. Now you're two halves of an ice cube. Do you know how to crack an ice cube? Well, only with a hammer or something. Well, what you do is you scratch it and you tap it. Right. With the chisel or whatever no not a chisel you can just get the the handle of a of a of, of your spoon and just tap it once you scratch it it will crack right crack but if you put right. the ice cube together what happens i don't know well if you put the ice cube together it instantly refreezes and now you haven't got a crack well in the right conditions it'll refreeze right in the right conditions it has to be cold yeah. yes but before it refreezes let's floated in water cold icy water the right conditions yep and we're going to separate it ever so slightly okay 
and a bit of water gets up there and what happens? It'll freeze in the right conditions. Right. And just so creating it freezes, we can separate it again and a little bit more of icy water gets inside. Yep. Just before it refreezes, we separate it again. Now that is a turning mechanism that you'll make somehow when you do the operation, isn't it? To That's create right. that. Okay. But the activation of that separation is done by you. Uh, by me or by you. Oh, sugar. Okay, so that involves me turning some sort of a mechanism um, a certain way or a certain amount. I presumably, what, on a daily basis for a period of time? Or... Morning and night. Oh, God, poor kid. Or she can do it at school. Well, I mean, some of it, can, I mean, is it something she can manage herself if I'm not there? She will have the nurse, she goes to boarding school, you said? She goes to boarding school. There, there's a school nurse there that will do it for her. Yeah, she, I mean, ultimately, she's going to have some downtime at home to wait for the swelling to settle and we'll do some lessons from home, etc. And obviously, I, my husband will be there to support her, so... I don't know how, I mean, how much time do they tend to be, you know, laying low for? Three weeks or something like that before they're back at school? Or... We'll calculate it today, right now, okay? We'll, we'll figure that out as soon as I explain that it's you that's going to grow your child's jaw, just like growing an right. ice cream. Okay. You make me, you make me nervous. <laughs> uh, I get the impression you might be a nervous lady. Well, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I, I just, I, I'm a lawyer, <laughs> which means that all the medical stuff is not my forte. But um, I mean, whatever it is, we'll we'll make it work, and it'll be done properly. So. All right. So we're going to grow you. I mean, you know, talk. bottom bottom line is it's a significant thing What's to go it? ahead with. Well, the the actual procedure. It's a significant thing, um, but I do have confidence in the medicine. So I feel that it is the right thing to do. I do think she's going to really feel it for a short period of time. Uh, and uh, obviously, I don't think any parent likes the idea of. Your child, well, your, your, yeah, your child has other options, and that's the surgery as well. Yeah, no, we're doing this to remove her tonsils, to remove her adenoids, to remove her wisdom teeth, to remove four premolars, to take out a turbinectomy, to open up her airway on her right. She's not avoiding operations. So yeah. the choice is this, and working with you, the alternate is four yeah. or five or six or twenty operations as she ages and matures. Sure. Does that make sense? When, when it comes absolutely. And, and we One. can't avoid the CPAP machine. Yeah, yep. Right? So you have to focus yes. on what we're trying to avoid as much as what we're trying to treat. Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. So yeah. this, just one question. This mecha the mechanism that I'm twisting, for example, after the surgery's done, the mechanism I twist, how long does that go on for? Does that go on for weeks or okay. months? Okay, well, we're going to calculate and... it. We're going to calculate it soon. Oh, right, right, right. Right? That's, that's yep. what we're going to do today, okay? okay. We're going to give a yep. prediction as to how far we're going to do it, okay? Next question is also, are you able to provide images as to what her physical you know the the what her face shape will look like or not until it's all said and done well not we know it's said and done and all i could do is show you other little girls and boys well yeah i've seen that and it's been certainly um impressive enough so all right yeah. okay so i'm going to go back to what we were looking at okay so here's a vertical drop line and we're going to bring the upper teeth as far as this drop line that's five millimeters and now okay, you can now, see right. she's got an even bigger overbite. Yep. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, God, yep. Okay. And the other thing I want to do is I want to rotate it down a little bit. And why I'm rotating it, why I'm rotating it is because she's a little bit short as well. So we've widened her a bit. We're going to advance her a bit. We're just going to increase the height a little bit. So it's just going to give her a little bit more tooth show when she smiles. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now she's got a much bigger overjet. Yeah. Overbite. 
And this, this is this is during surgery or after surgery. Yeah, this is what I'm going to be doing to it during surgery. Right. Okay, I've got that. Okay. Good. She's not going to be hurt by it. And now I've got a distance of about there to there. It's about seven millimeters. It's not far. Yep. Yeah. Got that. Yep. It's not far. But that distance now we can do a bigger IMDO. And because we're going to be able to pull this further forward, we can stretch that muscle further and open her airway even more. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Yes. So we're going to count the number of millimeters that we're going to move everything forward. Okay. Okay. Yep. One, two, I'm moving something else there. There's always something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe eleven or ten and a half millimeters. Mm -hmm. And do you see how this side is shorter than this side? Yep. So we're going to grow this side a bit longer than this side. So maybe an extra half a millimeter or something or one and a half millimeters. Right. Oh, wow. Okay. And now you can see her teeth are in the middle. Yes. And now her teeth me mesh. Do you see that? Yep. I do. Yes. So that should take one millimeter a day. It should take you about 11 or 10 days. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Yes. All right. So will, so will that, sorry, will that bone grow a millimeter a day? Yes. That's incredible. And if it doesn't, I'll eat my hat. It also makes the jaw a little bit wider. So that is the body of bone you are growing. They're the two halves of the ice cube. Okay. Yep. And you're doing the same thing on the other side. Yeah, just slightly less. Okay. Like that. And now you've got a new jawbone. Yep. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, when I twist that, when I move that millimeter a day, is that a painful thing for the child? Imagine you are pregnant and yeah. the baby's growing. Yes. As the baby grows, does your skin of your belly also grow? Stretches, yes. It stretches. That feeling of stretching at this distance, I doubt you'll feel anything. Okay. It will be like going from three months pregnant to four months pregnant. Okay, okay. And now we can measure that distance, 11 millimeters. Okay, is that is that significant in terms of your job and other patients that you have seen? Is this well, as significant? I've got another thing that I need to do. Remember, yep. we moved the attachment of those two muscles. Yeah. Yep. And we now have the airway here. And that bone there, which is connected there to there, that muscle's being stretched out. Yep. But it reaches a point like a bungee cord. Eventually you've stretched it out so far that it can't stretch any further and yep. it starts to drag this forward. Does that make sense? Sorry, what's the dragging forward? The... This bone. So it's a muscle on the inside of this chin attached to that bone that's getting dragged forward. Right. Yeah? Yes. So we're going to magnify that by doing this. You ready? Yep. By giving her a little chin. And what that so what's does, that made? Sorry? What's that made of? The blue bit, that's her that's her. Yes. So this is her bone. The purple bit is her bone, is it? Yes. So how are you gonna grow that? I don't. I do make... I do it at the same time in, in during the second operation. <laughs> so hang on, so so you so this is more than one procedure? It's three procedures. That's what the consent was that I sent you to read. Three procedures, and is it under in, in the one operation though? 
No, the first operation is moving the upper jaw forward and yep. putting the distractors in place. The second operation is to remove the distractors and give her a chin and more of a pull of yep. this muscle. And the third operation is to remove the little plate I put here and the plate I put here in the first operation. Okay. All right. The what, uh, is this over a, what, two month period, three month period? Could you, the is second there a time operation period? is about eight weeks after the first. Right. And the third operation is about three months after the second. Right, right, okay. Now, she has a longer jaw, a more balanced face, and she has stretched out the airway behind her tongue. Yeah. So if yeah. she has to go on a CPAP machine at the age of 50, you can, I will give you my nursing home number. And, <laughs> and I'll come and find you. <laughs> you come and find me, okay? Sure. So, yeah. okay. this is her original jaw. And this is her new jaw. Do you understand? That's the story. That's the original. The green is the original, where she yep. is right now. And I'll just change the color. So this is her where she is now, and this is where she will be. Right. She will still look like a girl. She yeah. She she won't. She won't be heavy in the jaw like no. that. No, no, she will yeah. still look like a girly girl. Good, good. All right. But because we grew this space of bone, this tooth will come into this space. Does that make sense? This tooth here will come into this space here to bite against this tooth here. Right, right, okay. And when it moves forward, the wisdom tooth that's here will grow up and it will meet this wisdom tooth here because we created room back here for it to also come down. Right. So she hopefully gets 32 teeth. Yep. She doesn't need to have a wisdom tooth removed. She doesn't have to have premolars removed. She doesn't have to have her tonsils removed. She doesn't need to have her turbinates removed and she yep. will be normal. She'll breathe through her nose, on her back, with a little chin that also allows her lips to naturally meet when she's asleep and she yep. breathes through her nose. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And she will still look as cute as a button. Yeah, well, she is a very pretty child, I have to say. <laughs> and that's not being biased. She is a pretty kid. Um, is, it, oh, is it often the case that um, patients are a little bit shocked by the change in physical appearance? No. But they are shocked when I compare their beautiful child to what they used to be. And then they say, <laughs> oh my God, I had no idea. Yeah, well, she actually she's very conscious of this, um, this um, the way she looks now. Um, having said that, she's already a really pretty kid. So um, she, she, it's her, it, she was given the option to, to do this and she's opted for it, so. Right, well, you're giving her a gift. Yeah, well, I, I think so. I think we're very lucky we can do it. And the reason why it's an even more special gift is because you're really scared. Oh, yeah, well, you know, I, I, I'm, is that an unusual thing for parents doing this with their kids? Y no, it's not unusual. It's normal. Yeah. Yeah. It's normal. Yeah. But if you don't do it, you may as well not vaccinate your children against smallpox. Yeah. Or mumps. Do we have to prove to you that your child's vulnerable to measles by letting them get measles? And when they get measles, you can't fix it with the vaccination. The only thing that works is if you believe the disease is serious. Yeah. No, I, I look, I, like, 
I've, I've had my husband in the psychiatric ward for six weeks at a time was because and he was diagnosed with acute sleep apnea where he 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 was so sleep deprived yeah he became psychotic yeah so you, I, I understand the severity of sleep apnea and how it can affect somebody it's terrible disease yes and he certainly had the very worst case of it right <clears throat> well i'm just here to fix it thank you and i'm very glad i'm very glad that, that you'll do that so all right thank you so much for letting me talk to you all right oh look i'm, I'm really sorry about the muck up earlier it's okay if i could just say one thing i found the disjointed you know um between all the different parties involved in it, it's, it's a little disconcerting. I, you know, it's not like there's one person that you deal with. You sort of talk to all different people. You mean between um, the orthodontists, anyway. ourselves, and all the people, the radiologists, and people scanning teeth? Yeah, yeah, there's just a lot of, um, yeah, and different different people that you speak to. And Anyway, it's coming into fruition. Do you know how many people are involved? No, I actually have no idea, but I'm sure. It's it's around I'm about assuming 80. there's a lot. It's about eighty people. Amazing. 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 And they're all there just for your child. Mm. Alright. I'm not the only guy. There's about eighty people well, around incredible, the world. Incredible technology. Yeah. Incredible. So you gotta thank Alright, well Because if you if he didn't tell you, you had this other pathway. Yeah, we're very grateful to Peter. Been very, very impressed by his care, so. All right, we'll send him a bottle of wine, yeah? Oh, <laughs> we're definitely. All right. Speak to you later. Now, have you got all the Thank you so much. And you've signed off on everything. You've crossed your T's and dotted your I's, you're a lawyer. As far as I know, I'll have to go back and review all of that with um, my husband. Um, have you paid your money? Yeah, well, we've paid about Four thousand. That was for the O and O. Does that make That's sense? Today, yeah. Yep. But I haven't paid any more. I mean, I I have never had an invoice. <laughs> so I only got a call from <laughs> saying that we now had to pay some money, and so of course we paid that. And I'm unsure uh, what the next step is. So well, the next step, I'm going to send through the consents to you again to your email. Thank you. And go with the flow. You've got my phone number. If you have an issue, remember there are 80 people. Of course. You, you don't have to talk to all of them, but there are some people that you do have to talk to. All right? Cool. Thank you so much, Doctor. Now, how can I... Will you send me a YouTube link or something for this meeting? Or I will try. <laughs> I'm a dinosaur with all this stuff, and my kids are... I think you them. are. I think you've got to have... What's the boy... Yeah, I think I'm... What's the boy's name? Can I have a look at you? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Aren't you clever? Yeah. He's clever. Yes, I am. <laughs> By the way, he has the same problem. All right. Well, I he, yeah, well, I realised that, and we're starting. <laughs> yeah. But he's a bright kid. We're starting the. Uh, we're starting the process of. Uh, uh, well, you anyway. listen to Doc. If it's okay, my word. Thank you so much, Doctor. Can I? Right. Can I get moving now? I have to. Um, Okay. Great for, for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.